The Fate franchise is one of my favorite in all of anime. And this past year, I've gotten to watch a lot of the entries in it. I saw the original Dean adaptation, the first Heaven's Feel movie, Fate Extra, the first season of Fate Khalid, and of course, Fate Apocrypha, which is the focus of today's video for day 7, I think, of the 12 days of anime. Each iteration of Fate is doing slightly different things, or completely different in the case of Khalid, but they all have some things in common, and that is how it sort of relishes in the absurdity to tell an interesting story. Fate Apocrypha has a bit of a slower start compared to the other Fates, which also have slow starts. But during the last quarter or so, there's so many great battles that did so many great things that I fell in love with it. So I want to break down some of these battles, at least go over them quickly, and talk about why I was so excited for them and how they made Fate Apocrypha my top anime of 2017. Episode 17 and 18 is where it really started picking up, and that was a battle against Assassin of Black. Because, you see, Assassin of Black is Jack the Ripper. But it turns out she is a lolly. Because fate. But also, because it is fate, it pushes beyond just being a lolly, but then reveals that Assassin is actually an amalgamation of spirits. The spirits of unborn children who are killed, and through magic, these spirits were given a physical form, being Jack the Ripper. This makes her a sort of tragic villain in that she is made of innocent children, but is also devoid of morals, leading her to murder. Archer of Red wants to protect these children, while Ruler wants to release them from the binding together, which means they would be killed. And what I love about this scene is how much it breaks Archer. She has a noble desire to protect children, to give them a good life, and seeing right in front of her a person willing to kill them without remorse. This whole scene, this whole episode, shows how terrible humanity can be, how terrible the world is, and this ties into the message of the series about if humanity is good or not, if the world is beautiful or terrible, and if it makes sense to just give up on humanity. Then we get a couple episodes, a build-up leading to the final series of battles, which are filled with absurd yet awesome scenes. One example of this is the battles that take place on top of a flying airplane. Like, who is the crazy person that thought this was a good idea? And who is the even crazier person that approved it and made it work? We have a battle on top of planes between Archer of Black and Rider of Red, and it is just awesome. It is a brutal hand-to-hand -hand fight going across the wings into the plane itself, through the wall, out onto the other wing. And that is just crazy and awesome. And this is what anime fights are all about. You also have the narrative stakes on top of it beyond just the fate of the Holy Grail War, which makes these awesome fights even better. And then, of course, speaking of awesome fights, you have the one between Sieg and Lancer of Red. This fight is a pure spectacle where you can see the character's power on full display. I don't even know how to describe it except saying, just look at the screen. The clips are there. This is nothing short of epic. And just when Sieg seems overwhelmed and at his limit, Rider of Black flies in with Rider of Red's double phantasm blocking the attack and letting Sieg get the final blow in. Just when it comes to pure spectacle, I can't think of any other fight that lives up to this one in all of anime. It may not have quite the narrative strengths of the others, but it was just pure awesome seeing the clash of powers and all that. And I really loved, like, how as we got closer to the end, all the characters got a time to shine. Like Ryder destroying the cannons in the garden and rushing in to save Sieg. And I just love characters like Ryder. No, not because he is the trap, but because of how weak he is. But he is inspired to do something great by his hero and is able to come in and save the day. Then you have Saber attacking Assassin of Red by flying an airplane into her. An airplane. How is that not awesome? And then I have to talk about the battle between Castor of Red, who is Shakespeare, and Ruler, who is, of course, Joan of Arc. Shakespeare is such an amazing villain, one of my favorites in all of fate and really all of anime. He isn't someone who fights with overwhelming power, but he instead is in the background. During the fight, he goes after Ruler's ideals, using his power to force her to live parts of her life. And while her resolve holds through most of it, it is when she sees her burning at the stake that she's truly affected. Because in this vision, it is not her being killed, but Sieg. She is selfless, willing to fight for others and give up her life. But to see a person she loves being killed because of her, that's what gets to her. 
Shakespeare is a master storyteller in real life, or at least as historians say, I didn't find his works to be that impressive, uh, but his reputation as a storyteller carries over. He fights and defeats ruler, not with power, but with storytelling, attacking her emotions. This type of fight is a perfect contrast to the ones that came before it. We had all those big hype moments, and those were awesome. So a more emotional-driven fight is just great storytelling. And speaking of storytelling, that's another reason I love Shakespeare so much here. His motivation is purely to experience and create a great story. There's a moment where Shiro uses one of his command spells on Shakespeare. Basically, he's telling Shakespeare, don't betray me. I know you will because you think it'd be a good twist. And I just love that because I'm sure Shakespeare would love that type of plot twist. He even gets excited as he sees the twists and turns in the final fights because it's an exciting story. And this is just so great. Combine that with Shakespeare's just overall flair and his English accent, and yeah, he's the perfect villain. But no discussion of villains in Fate Apocrypha would be complete without Shiro, who has nothing to do with the other Shiro. I know this is weird, but in this video, Shiro is one Fate Apocrypha, not the main character from the main Fates. So yeah, this is weird. But so is fate. Shiro is a villain fueled by noble motivations, wanting the best for humanity. The difference between him and the heroes is how they view humans. Shiro does not believe in the inherent good of humanity. And this makes him a parallel to characters like Ruler and Sieg, since all of them have seen pain and suffering, but choose different paths. And that makes a battle with him against Ruler and then later Sieg so powerful because it really is a clash of ideals. And the characters are driven by so much, wanting to fight, going all out. And it is just incredible. I especially like the battle between Sieg and Shiro because Shiro is fighting for a noble cause to save humanity, while Sieg is fighting for revenge. This twist with the villain being noble while the hero not is really cool. It's good storytelling and it was a fitting end to the series. These fights at the end of Apocrypha are what make the series so great. I remember when I first started the series, I was going through my list of shows to watch to make my giant list for 2017, and I thought that I would drop it after a couple episodes, finding it to be just a bland spinoff. But what I got was another worthy entry of the franchise, and in my personal opinion, the anime of the year. And it might even be my favorite across all of Fate though it's hard to say because the different series are doing different things and the others are more of a thing that they have to be taken together. But anyway, Fate Apocrypha definitely surpassed my expectations. And I really recommend it to you guys if you're fans of Fate. Try not going into it with that high of expectations, but if you find it interesting at the start, you'll probably at least enjoy it by the end. Though I will warn you, there are a couple minor spoilers related to Heaven's Feel in it, so if you want to go into that completely blind, save Apocrypha until you've seen all of those movies or read the visual novel because that's what fans of fate would say to do. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you, I have no idea when, tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. Talk to you then.